Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about clavulanic acid, also known as clavulanate, and how it protects penicillin. So you've probably heard of penicillin, which is an antibiotic that was discovered in the 1920s by Alexander Fleming. It's an antibiotic that is characterized by having something, a structural component, known as a beta-lactam beta-lactam ring. That's this square ring right here with the nitrogen and the carbon double bonded to an oxygen. So it's got a beta-lactam ring. Of course, there are other structurally related antibiotics, derivatives of penicillin, things like ampicillin and amoxicillin and uh, cephalosporins. Um, and penicillin and these related antibiotics can actually be inactivated by inhibitors like a group of enzymes known as beta-lactamases. So beta-lactamases are an enzyme and they actually cleave the beta-lactam ring, they cut it. And then penicillin no longer works to inhibit bacterial growth uh, because the, the, the structure has been disrupted by the cleavage of that beta-lactam ring. Now, resistance to penicillin is becoming very common because these beta-lactamases are present in so many bacteria now. Um, there are a lot of medical isolates now that are resistant to penicillin, and so other drugs have to be used instead. Um, resistance is also growing to those other drugs, and so you can see why this would be a problem. Now, luckily, resistance to penicillin and other sort of structurally related antibiotics can be countered by combining these beta-lactam antibiotics uh, with beta-lactamase inhibitors, so compounds that will inhibit the beta-lactamases to keep them from cleaving the ring, the beta-lactam ring, in penicillin and related drugs. An example of a beta-lactamase inhibitor is clavulanic acid. Again, that's also known as clavulanate sometimes. An example is Augmentin. So if you've ever been prescribed Augmentin, you probably looked at the box and saw that it was a mixture of amoxicillin, which is one of these structurally related antibiotics. It has that beta-lactam ring and clavulanic acid. And so the two are there together. So let's look at how they work. Here I've drawn the structure of penicillin and related drugs. So they've got slightly different R groups here, but otherwise quite similar. And now here is the structure of clavulanic acid. And in red, I've noted the similarities. And so you can see how much clavulanic acid looks like penicillin and related drugs. And so the mechanism through which it uh, interferes with these beta-lactamases is it actually binds to the active site of beta-lactamases. So what is the active site of an enzyme? The active site of an enzyme is the place where the substrate binds for the enzyme to act on. So normally, beta-lactamases would bind penicillin and related drugs and cleave that beta-lactam ring. But instead, the beta-lactamase will bind clavulanic acid, which is similar enough to its normal substrates to bind that active site, but dissimilar enough that the beta-lactamases can't actually cleave the ring. And so it's a way of just kind of jamming up the beta-lactamases. You've got this clavulanic acid sitting in the active site of the beta-lactamase, so it can no longer inactivate the co-administered drug, whether that's um, penicillin or amoxicillin or ampicillin or, or whatever. And so it basically just blocks that enzyme from being able to work. So does that solve all of our problems with antibiotic resistance? Does that mean that we can just administer penicillin and related drugs easily now? Not exactly. And the reason for that is because the bacteria are able to, in some cases, overcome this clavulanic acid defense. For example, some bacteria exhibit increased production of beta-lactamases. What that means is they make so many beta-lactamases that all of the clavulanic acid, all of the clavulanic acid in a drug can get used up 
blocking active sites of all of those beta lactamases, and there would still be even more left over to um, inactivate the co-administered drug. So that's one way in which we've got resistance to clavulanic acid. Another way is that some bacteria have mutated their beta lactamase. So their beta-lactamase, they've mutated it in such a way that clavulanic acid no longer binds it, but the beta-lactamase is still able to bind penicillin and related drugs and cleave that beta-lactam ring. So that's certainly dangerous. Another possibility for bacteria to obtain resistance to clavulanic acid is by HGT which of course stands for horizontal gene transfer. This refers to things like transformation and transduction and conjugation, ways in which bacteria can exchange genetic material with each other. So there are bacteria that can acquire a new beta-lactamase, basically one of these mutated ones, by horizontal gene transfer and then be able to still break down penicillin and related drugs despite the presence of clavulanic acid. And so while we still have um, clinical uses for clavulanic acid um, to, to be useful in overcoming infections, it's not a cure-all because we are having resistance building up to clavulanic acid now as well. If you're interested in learning more about either enzymes and active sites, you can see my video on introduction to enzymes. I also have multiple videos on horizontal gene transfer, videos on conjugation, transformation, transduction, so check those out if you are interested, and thanks for watching Biology Professor.